Well, um, here I am in my home, and before I take the drug, uh, Dr. Osmond's got uh, one or two quite unrehearsed questions. I've no idea what they are to put to me. Right, Christopher. Carry on. Could you tell me the date today, please? The date? Yes. Uh, it was Friday, the um, 2nd of December. In right. 1955, I want Christopher Lady, MP after me. and TV now, presenter, to took mescaline to under the supervision of Humphrey Osmond. The BBC filmed the experiment. This is the first time of wood. Sure. To be rich and prosperous, a nation must have a safe, secure supply of wood. After initial psychological tests, the experiment began at noon. Well, shall we go right ahead, then? And oh, I'll take it. Yes, there she is. Well, uh, I'm feeling perfectly fit at the moment, and the same as... I ever am, and I'll take the drug now. An hour and a half later, there were definite effects. Could you uh, perhaps tell us any particular colour which you think... Yes, uh, there's colour just behind Tubby there. Yes. Uh, this colour of... Uh, damn, I, I warned you, Humphrey, that uh, on colours my vocabulary is bad. Are you talking about the reddish curtain behind Tubby? Yes. And, uh, in fact, it has the most extraordinary gradations of mauve and, uh, and, uh, and lights. Sorry, this is just my, my own uh, poverty of vocabulary. I can't describe it. Uh, would it uh, surprise you if I said it looked to be a rather dullish red curtain, uh, which uh, has oh, very few... Intellectually, I'd be muted yes. something, yes. Uh, yeah. Now, who would you feel in this situation was, uh, to, whose judgment would you feel was sounder? Ah, uh, now you're asking me, which, uh, this mm -hmm. is a $64 question, mm -hmm. whether I'm seeing the curtain more nearly as it is, or whether I am intoxicated and seeing pink elephants, mm -hmm. which is, of course, the thing that fascinates me about it. Um... <laughs> Well, all I can say is it's uh, still a $64 question, Humphrey. I'm looking yes. very hard now. Yes. Beyond the camera. Today, elevated to the House yes. of Lords, so Christopher Mayhew watches that, uh, the film with Humphrey Osmond. Well, it's good evening or good morning. But you also said the thing in the ranch show where it was... Now I'm back to again, and I see that the sentence I meant to say can't be said. Mm -hmm. I think this is the most interesting thing I've ever done. And I say that after 30 years in which the whole ghastly business, you know, has been depreciated, when drugs have been abused, when this is our major social problem. I mean, I do know all that, and I hope and pray it never helped anybody to experiment with drugs. Nevertheless, the actual experience seems to me to have been profoundly interesting and thought-provoking. The time's now just on 1400, and in the last half hour or so, uh, Christopher has been preoccupied to a very great extent with time. and We've had numerous discussions on this. In the interval, he uh, tried to instruct me as to how to work his recording machine, and unfortunately, we were quite unable to work it. He has also been listening to a certain amount of music. Now, I'm going to ask him once more to go over the Babcock sentence that I did, and also to take away seven from a hundred. Now, Christopher, would you be prepared to do that for me, please? Well, you've got the at what I would call my um, uh, period of time when I am capable of doing it. Right, but well, I'll now repeat the sentence. To be rich and prosperous, a nation must have a safe, secure supply of wood. To be rich and prosperous, a nation must have a safe, secure supply of wood. I got the two... Right. Well done. Now, would you like to take away seven from a hundred again? Uh, 93, 86, 79, 72, 66, 60... Uh, 72, whatever it is, uh, 65, uh, 58, 51, uh, 40, I can see my interest is still, 44, uh, 37, 30, 23, 23. Now I'm off again, Humphrey. Mm -hmm. in, in my period of time, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm off again for a long period, but you won't notice mm -hmm. probably that I've, I've gone away at all. Perhaps half a dozen times during the experiment, uh, I would uh, be withdrawn from my surroundings and from myself and uh, have an experience, uh, a state of euphoria, for a period of time that didn't end for me. It didn't last for minutes or hours, but for months. I do try and assure you that from my point of view, between 
uh, the time that I perhaps begin this sentence and the time that I end it. Mm -hmm. I shall go on a long time will elapsed, something. And, uh, the psychiatrists afterwards, and common sense, they all said, this is nonsense. You couldn't have had these experiences because there was no time, as the film shows, there's no time for you to have them in. And the psychiatrists would speak, and I, I accept this, that I was simply showing the symptoms of what they call the disintegration of the ego. I accept that too. At the same time, they didn't have the experience. <laughs> and uh, when I look back, even now, after 30 years, when I remember that after the experiment, I remember that afternoon, not as so many minutes spent in my drawing room, interrupted by these strange excursions in time, but as years and years of heavenly bliss, interrupted by short periods in my drawing room. When I recall it, and when I recall various uh, other symptoms, I think the simplest explanation is that I had these experiences, that they were real, and that they took place outside time. I am moving at this moment from one time into another time and back again. And I'm, uh, I'm not so conscious, I'm free of removing myself in space. But I'm extremely conscious are moving in time, are things having no succession, and that there be no absolute time, no absolute space. It is simply what we impose on the outside world. The BBC was worried. Could the film be broadcast? Mayhew himself was all in favour but viewing the footage, it was hard to judge the true significance of his experience. Expert advice was called for, and a special committee of psychiatrists, philosophers and theologians assembled. Amongst those shown the film was Canon Besser from Cambridge University. From a religious standpoint, he felt Mayhew's mystical adventure had been obtained on the cheap. The others agreed and the committee had no hesitation in reaching a verdict when asked by the BBC whether or not Mayhew's experience was valid. The film was never shown. I think that uh, the experience was valid. I, I think, uh, for the reasons I've given, that uh, you can dismiss it as a dreamlike hallucination which lasted a fraction of a second owing to the disintegration of my ego and so on, or you can say with me, it was a real experience which happened outside time. And that is my view. And that is, and for various sort of associated symptoms, I would say that uh, uh, on that occasion, by a shortcut, I did visit the world known to the mystics and to some mentally sick people. And therefore, to that extent, I'd say it is valid. Huxley, too, was attacked by theologians. The Roman Catholic scholar R.C. Zener wrote an article dismissing the doors of perception. He argued that wide differences in people's response to the drug cast doubt on individual claims to enlightenment. So that he could write with authority, Zener arranged to take a dose of mescaline himself. Overcome by hysterical laughter, he found the experience to be spiritually empty, and he concluded that Huxley's claims had no more credibility than the delusions of a lunatic. Zena maintained that the visions of the great Christian mystics were something entirely different. Those who believe in the value of psychedelic drugs see no clear distinction. 